QuickBooks Online 2024 Budgeted Balance Sheet Export to Excel. Get ready and some coffee because we get things done on time with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a quick budgeted balance sheet disclaimer. It looks like at this time, QuickBooks Online does not have the capacity to run budgeted balance sheet reports. Let's go over a quick history of budgets from QuickBooks to get an idea of the progression over time. I believe that the desktop version of QuickBooks has had the capacity for some time to run budgets for both the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, as well as the balance sheet. However, QuickBooks Online has not had the capacity prior to recently to even do the data input for the budgeted balance sheet, only having the capacity for the budgeted income statement, otherwise known as the budgeted profit and loss reports. So recently, we now have this option to be able to do the data input for the budgeted balance sheet, but it doesn't look like we have the related reports that you would think would be generated from that data input, such as the budget overview for the balance sheet and the, and the budget versus actual for the balance sheet. Now, I would expect or I would think going forward that hopefully QuickBooks would be able to use that data input to then uh, create those reports, but I don't believe they are there as of the time of this recording. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports are still on that left-hand side. We're in the favorites. We're gonna be right-clicking on that balance sheet and open a link in a new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss, otherwise, no one has the income statement. Open link in a new tab. We'll do the same thing for the trusty TB. We'll tab to the right. We're going to close that hamburger bun on the meat of the balance sheet. And then let's change the range. We're going from 010124 tab, 02924 tab. Selecting the drop down. We want the months to see them side by side. Let's run the report. Let's tab to the right, do the same thing. We're closing the hamburger bun on the meat of the income statement, and then we're not quite done with it. We put the hamburger bun on top, but we're still picking out the lettuce and whatnot, even though the hamburger's closed now. We're gonna go from 010124 uh, to 022924, and then we'll change this to months again, and then we'll run it. Now we can finally eat the hamburger. We've got the lettuce situated. We're gonna go to the tab to the right, and we'll close the hamburger on the meat of the trial balance. Change the range. We're going from 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Once again, select the drop down months and run it. Okay, so in, a pri in the prior section, we've been thinking about the budgets. And the first budget that comes to mind when you're thinking about a basic budget is, of course, the income statement, otherwise known as the profit and loss, that being the performance report. So when I'm thinking, it's kind of like running a track and field or something. We're trying to say, you know, how far did we go? Instead of seeing how fast it took us, 
We're thinking, how far did we go within a certain time frame, like an hour? And then we're going to try to beat that record next time. That's what the income statement is. How far did we go month by month, year by year? Can we do better next year by possibly making good decisions, hiring good marketers and whatnot that are going to have advertising that doesn't totally alienate you know, our, everyone that used to buy our stuff and actually might make them like it more? That would be nice. And then so then and then that'll increase our revenue. That's the idea. But if we're getting more detailed on the budget, we would want to do a more comprehensive budget to say, well, where will we be after the next month, after the next year? That's the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is the double entry accounting system. You will recall the balance sheet has assets, liabilities and equity. That is the double entry accounting system. Assets are what we have, liabilities and equity, who has claim to the assets. We can adjust this by thinking of it as assets minus liabilities equals the book value of the business, which is equity, ownership, uh, the owner's claim to the assets of the business. So that's kind of like the bottom line from a finance perspective of the business at any given time, in essence. So the income statement gives us information about time that has passed to get us to the bottom line of the balance sheet, equity, owner's claim to the assets of, of the business. So when we're budgeting, the income statement's going to be the primary mover that's going to be basically telling us where we will get to by the end, which will be a new balance sheet perspective of equity, right? Because the income statement is part of the equity. It's net income rolls into the income statement. However, the budget's a little bit more complex than that because, because you also have other things that could happen that we're concerned about, such as, for example, the cash. We want to make sure that we have the cash flow. So if we were doing a full budget process, which we have other course and sections on, we'd probably want a cash flow uh, budget as well, as well as budgets based on purchasing, which might include like inventory purchases and stuff, if we're, especially if we're making things as well as the budget for the capital expenditures. What kind of fixed assets do we plan to be purchasing? And that those are gonna have an, an impact on you know, our cash flow budget and our revenue budget because we might be purchasing more fixed assets in an attempt to of course increase revenue, not only in the next year, but in future years and months and so on into the future. So the, so the balance sheet can be a little bit tricky as well because note that the balance sheet, of course, has to be in balance. When we're entering transactions into the balance sheet, let's, I'm trying to, what am I doing? I don't know. I'm trying to just see assets and then I want to see the liabilities and equity. So liabilities and equity. So when I, when I enter things into the balance sheet, usually that when our normal data input happens with us entering forms, which then QuickBooks forces us is, forces us to use a double entry accounting system so that at least two accounts are affected all the time, our, our ending result being in balance. That may not necessarily be the case when we're entering a budget, because when we enter the budget, QuickBooks might not force us to be in balance, right? We're gonna, so, so we're going to have to use our own conception of, of a better understanding in order to properly calculate the balance sheet based on the income statement, right? So if, so if I'm going to say this is our performance on the income statement, that's going to be part of uh, telling us how we get to the next point, the end result on uh, the balance sheet is the general idea. Okay, so the, the starting point could be similar on the balance sheet in that I might start with, uh, with, a, with a balance sheet format from uh, the prior period and then basically make adjustments to the balance sheet. So I'm going to start with a balance sheet, basically where we are at, at a certain given time, and that's going to be uh, the end of February. Now, we have the same kind of thing that I could use this balance sheet, but it has a bunch of subtotals in it and whatnot, and it might be easier for our budget to exclude all of these subtotals. So it might actually be easier to once again use the trial balance because it doesn't have all the subtotals. So if I go to the trial balance over here, I can run this. Let's run it for the totals as my starting point. And now I just have my balance sheet on top of my income statement, the balance sheet being the assets, which are from cash down to the machinery and equipment. Those are mostly debits. And then we have the uh, liabilities and equity being the other side. We have the accounts payable, credits of the liability, and then we have the 
uh, the, the liabilities down to the equity here. Here's where equity starts. And this is where it gets a little bit messy in that the income statement is part of equity. So there's a couple different, I don't really want the income statement. I would like to remove the income statement and have it just roll into owner's equity. But I could just squish all, this, all these numbers into one number as owner's equity. I could do this a couple different ways. Like I could start, for example, by just taking this up a, a year to 010125, 010125 and run it. So then now everything's been squished into equity, same numbers. But what if I had transactions in January of 2025? So let me just do it this way. I'm going to say uh, 010124 to 022924. And so there's our two months. I'm going to export this and then I'll just delete the income statement and roll the income statement into, into equity. I'll show you how to do that. It sounds complicated, but it's not difficult. So let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm going to say export this to Excel. Now I've already done the income statement in Excel over here. So we already have a worksheet open. So if you don't have a worksheet, then you, then you don't have to use that one, but I'm going to, so I'm going to enable the editing and I would like to move this over to the other worksheet where we already have the income statement budget stuff. So I'm going to right click on the trial balance here and I'm going to say copy or move. And then I'd like to put it over uh in another in my other workbook which is the budget workbook and then i'll just say move it there por favor please if you would and then i'm going to grab it and drag it to the right so the first two tabs are income statements so i'll double click on them and i'll just say let's say p and l for short p and l one and then this was the p and l worksheet p and l worksheet or something like that and this one's going to be the balance sheet. We'll say one. Okay, so now I can just clean it up. I'm going to hold control and scroll up. And I'm just going to clean this up to get to get just to, all I want is just one line of numbers, possibly having not debits and credits, but rather assets being positive, liabilities and equities being negative. Or in other words, I'll represent the credits with negative numbers so I can put them in one column and prove that I'm in balance, not by having two columns that match each other, but rather by having to sum up the negatives and the positives, debits, positive, credits, negative, and it'll map out to zero. That's a little bit easier uh, to see because then I, can, then I can easily make my adjustments on one column instead of two columns. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, there's not really a whole, you could try to do this with an accounting equation format and not use debits and credits, but in, in my opinion, this area is where the debits and credits are going to become more useful. And so it's a lot easier to do, I think. Although if you don't understand debits and credits, you'll still be able to see what I'm doing here pretty clearly, I believe. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to, I'm going to format the whole worksheet to be the normal format first. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, Paintbrush just a cell over here. And then I'm going to paintbrush the entire worksheet on the triangle. So that's my default formatting. Then I'm going to right click on it and format the cells to what I would like. So it's all uniform formatting to start out with. I'm going to go currency, negative numbers bracketed. I don't really need, I don't want the dollar sign and I don't need the decimals because it's a, it's a budget, right? So it's going to be rounded. So I'll say, okay. And then I'm going to make it all bold home tab font group bold you don't have to make it bold yourself but i think that shows up a little bit better possibly on a, on a screen recording and then i'm just going to delete uh, all the stuff so let's just delete from uh i don't need the header from row one to five i'm selecting actually on the numbers row one to five right click delete and then i'm going to scroll down and say i don't need the totals down here i'll, I'll go ahead and delete that I'll be able to use my balancing concept, hopefully, to figure out if I messed anything up. So I'm going to delete this stuff. And then and then I'm going to go up and say, OK, now the credits, these are the credits. What I'd like to do is put them in here, but have them be negative. So the trick to do that, here's a little trick we can use. We can pull this. I'm going to take this whole column, or I could take the whole column this way. Like, here's the column. Right-click, copy it. I'm going to paste it over here first, right click, pasting it special, but subtract. So it's going to subtract. Nothing's in these cells. 
Therefore, it should just give me negative numbers flipping the sign. Boom, they're all negative. And then I'm going to copy that and put that back over here. Right click and paste. I want to paste it just like one, two, three, because I don't want any any uh, format formulas. Notice that these still have these funny formulas, even though it's just a number. So I'm going to do the same thing over here just to get rid of those equal signs. I'm going to select the whole thing, right click and copy, and then right click and paste one, two, three. And now there's no equal signs. It's just what we call a hard coded number. I no longer need this cell. So it has served its purpose and now it will be deleted. <laughs> so I don't know why that's, we're going to take it out because it served its purpose. You're going to delete that. Okay. I'm trying to mess with my soundboard. Apologies for that. It's going to be good once I get it. So I'm going to pull this over. So now I can just drag these into the same column. It's easier to use this and then control X, which is the same as cutting right click and cut. And then uh, hold on a sec, uh, control X and control V pasting. So I'm just going to do this all the way down control X, control V cut and paste, control X, control V cut and paste control X, control V control X, control V and control x control v control x and control v boom all right and then we have it in one column so now if i sum up this column this is the total debits debits and credits should come out to zero equals the sum of those uh did Let's go all the way up here, up to the top, and it adds up to zero. So that's my check figure that everything uh, looks good. We could do a fancy formatting down here and say, uh, as long as this is, if it's if it's greater than, uh, well, let's just I'll leave it I'll leave it like that. I won't I won't do fancy formatting right now. Let's put let's make it a different color just for now. So I'll make it green. And actually, <laughs> I don't know which color I want. Let's make it black and white. Let's make it for now. Let's make it black and white to see that that's my total column. Okay. So then, then let's go down. Now, I don't really need anything. See, this gives me like the, the drop down and then the subcategories. So I don't really need those subcategories. So that if I go to my worksheet over here, you can see the balance sheet has these bank accounts and then the subcategory or or where we went on property plant and equipment i have a furniture and a fixture as a parent and then a subcategory i just want the accumulated depreciation i don't need the parent here so what i'm going to do is say is just delete all of the ones that have a colon in it just so i have the the actual account not including the parent so i'm going to delete that so let's see if there's any more of those here's one so I'm going to delete everything from the colon on before. Uh, this one is just California. It's just a super long payable account. <laughs> and then this one, let's delete everything here. To do. And then this one, let's do the same. And then I could do everything for all these liability accounts, payroll liability. I might have to combine these into one account actually might be the better way to go. And and by the way, that could be another method that you might you, you might you might start with a summary balance sheet, right? But that could cause you problems because when you import it into uh into QuickBooks, it's going to go account by account rather than, you know, the summary. So I think this is the safer way to go to actually see all of the accounts. So that's what we'll do. And then everything, so now I'm on the income statement. So everything from down to here, the balance sheet stops right here. Now here's where we get, here's where I'm gonna make the adjustment. So this whole thing right here, if I sum this up, should be the equity section because it's the income statement, right? So boom. And so that comes out to 79, uh, 270 for total equity, or that's what, that's what the equity will be when the income statement is rolled out into it. In other words, if I look at the balance sheet over here, 
uh, and I pull out a trusty calculator and we said, and we just say, okay, here's the equity section. And so here's, uh, let's do this for February. So here's the whole income statement. That's the bottom line of the income statement, which was one, three, two, four, 47, one, three, two, four, 47. So that's going to close out to the set. So 77, eight, 96 plus the one, three, two, four point 47 gives us the 79, two, 70, 47. That should give us the 79, uh, two, 20, 47. Sorry, I said it wrong, I think. And then, and then the income statement here, the income statement is just credits minus the debits on the income statement. So here's the income statement, du, 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 which is one three uh, one three two four, right? That's what the income was one three two four, and then one three two four plus what's in owner's equity gives us this seventy nine two two zero. So I'm just going to delete this whole thing and just put seventy nine two two zero in there. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to roll, close out the income statement, negative 79220. I can also see down here, that's what I need to be in balance. And then I can delete the entire income statement. I'm just going to go from here, uh, the billable, and then 31 down to 49, right click and delete. So then this is still a good formula. So now I'm still in balance because my debits equal the credits. I just have my balance sheet uh, starting balance sheet. So this is my starting point balance sheet. So then uh, we can budget out what's going to happen on a monthly basis, or we, we might do the budget like on a quarterly basis, right? We might not do like a budget after each month uh, because it's kind of tedious to do that. Maybe we do a budget, a budgeted balance sheet where we will be at the end of the quarter or the end of the, the half a year, end of a year. But we'll do months, we'll start to do months right now. So where will we be at the end of each month? This isn't a performance thing. It's where are we going to end at at the end of each month? So I'm going to add a, a, a column, a row by selecting row one, right clicking and insert. And then I'm going to make a skinny over here. And then I'm going to say Jan and then Feb. And then I should be able to select those two, put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it to the right till we get to uh, December, boom. And then I'll make that a header by going home tab, font group, black, white, let's center it. I'm also gonna make A a little bit smaller because the only reason it's long is because of this. And it, I don't even need that one. I don't even need that one, man. I should just delete you right here, right now, this long account. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so there, so now we have everything kind of on one page. So this is where we, we stand or we're, what we're going to imagine to be our starting point. We're kind of going to imagine, even though this was for January and February, we'll imagine this is where we were at at the end of December of the prior year, right? And then we'll make some assumptions to see, okay, how can we get from there to see what's going to happen? And, where, and then where will we be at the end of January, which in part, in large part, is the performance of the profit and loss report. But again, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because of everything else that's going on. If you have accounts receivable, then how much is in accounts receivable versus you know, the, the cash or the checking account for, for the revenue that we generated? You know, There's cash flow issues. What if we, we purchase uh, equipment and so on and so forth? So it's actually a, a bit more complex. We'll use some conventions just to give you an idea of the budgeting processes that you could apply but again, we have other courses and sections on this. This borders into basically getting into like uh, finance and managerial accounting concepts. And we have courses on that if you wanted to dive into to those topics in more detail.